Hello everyone, the Senpai Code here. So for today's little lesson, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to make a spawn point as well as how to make a random spawn point between say five different locations or four different locations. So first thing that we're gonna to have to do is we have an advanced camera script up here. So we're gonna actually have to change it around this a bit so that it finds the character because we did have it so that we had the character dragged and dropped in it, but that's not gonna work because we're gonna be taking the character out and making the prefab of it. So what we're going to do is just simply add the line target equals game object dot find with tag player dot transform. So that's going to find the prefab uh, once it's loaded into the scene, the game object, and then it's going to zoom the camera over to that game object. And that's all we have to do for this script. Second, like I said, we're going to need to make a prefab of the player. So I do have the player here. So simply what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a resource folder because I want to actually get the uh, component rather than dragging and dropping it in uh, to every scene. It'll just simply find the player prefab. All we're going to do is we're going to right click, go to create folder, uh, and then we're going to name that folder resources. You'll see why in a second. So once we got the resource folder, let's drag and drop your prefab into that resource folder. And then we can actually delete this uh, player model. So now we don't have any model into the scene. So let's create multiple spawn points first and then we'll go into creating a single spawn point. So for multiple spawn points, simply just go up to uh, game object, let's create a empty. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna name that spawner. And we can actually position this wherever we can position at zero, 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 just to get it out of the way. So next, we're going to want to create the spawn points that we're going to want. So let's go ahead and create four more empty game objects and just reposition them. So I have one here, I have one over a bit higher up, and I have one down further, and then I have one further up. And so what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually want to create tags for these spawn points because we're going to be calling them on the tag for the array so that we don't have to actually load them all in. They will do it by itself. So simply go to add tag hit the plus and then put it as spawn point, which I have here and just hit save. And then just make sure that all of them have the tag as spawn point. Now, when you're doing this, just make sure that you at least have two. If you don't have two uh, spawn locations, then you're gonna get an error. Uh, so don't use this for just one spawn location. Uh, like I said, I'll go over that in a second. So here is the spawn points. So we do have the public game object array, spawn locations. Uh, and then we do have our public game object player, our private vector three respawn location. So we have a void awake. So right when the game starts, we have the spawn locations equals game object dot find game objects with tag spawn point. So it's gonna find all these and it's gonna put this in the array for us. So on void start player equals game object resource dot load player two type of game object. So that's why we have the resource folder so that we have prefabs in here that we can actually call through scripts and load automatically rather than having to drag and drop it on. Now this way is going to be a bit slower because the game engine has to actually look through the folder, look through the files and find that game object. Uh, it's faster if you actually drag and drop it on, it will actually work a bit faster but you're not gonna notice that much of a difference for this type of game. There's not much going on, so it's fine. Next, we'll have respawn location equals player.transform position, so it's getting the player's position and putting it on our respawn location. So nothing in the void update. You can get rid of that if you want. I like to keep it, uh, but uh, private void spawn player is the new function that we created and int spawn equals random range. So it's between the random range of the spawn uh, points that we have in the spawn location, so the length. So it's gonna go through all of them and then game object dot instantiate player spawn locations spawn dot transform position and then the quaternion identify. So it's gonna grab the player and put them at one of these random spawns locations. So just make sure that you actually attach a script sort. So I attached it on here uh, and like I said, we don't have anything and it's gonna grab the player, it's gonna grab the sizes for us. So boom, we hit play, it went, it found all of these spawn points for us and then it spawned us at the bottom one here. So let's go ahead and hit play again and see if we can get a different random spawn. So it spawned us at the top one now. Let's see if we can get the side. Okay, so it spawned us at the bottom left now and it will spawn you at a random location, bottom left again. But uh, yeah, that's how simple it is to actually create a random spawn location. So now how to create a 
single spawn location. So I'm just going to actually turn this script off and I'm going to turn this one on. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to close these because we actually don't need them. We can actually just use the spawner for this one. So on each level, if you have the spawner, you just put it at a certain location. And so let's say it's uh, right here. So the guy will be spawning here. And we can actually turn this onto a spawn point now. And since these are all disabled, I didn't want to have this on uh, with those four or else it would have spawned it on this one as well. So this one is a bit different. It's a bit more simple. We have the public game object spawn location, which is an array. And we I took the S off now because there's only one location. And then I put it as public game object player. And I did change this name to spawn player. So private vector three respawn location. And then we have our start. We don't have any awake. What we're going to do is we're going to call the player equals game object resource dot load player to game object type. So it's grabbing the same prefab and it's going to load it onto the plot here. And then we have our spawn location game object find the object with tag spawn point. So like I said, our spawner is the tagged. So it will spawn on the spawner now. And then we have our respawn location equals the player dot transform. And that goes into our spawn character. I change it to character instead of player because I do have this script names player. So I didn't want to have it conflict with that. So we do have a simpler spawn character function down here. It's just game object dot instantiate player spawn location dot transform position quaternion and identify. So with this script, it will actually spawn us on the spawner here and boom. So it found the spawner and it found the, it grabbed our player prefab. And like I said, for a game this size and everything, you're not going to notice a difference for grabbing a prefab. Now, if you're grabbing a whole bunch of prefabs and you have this big level and MMORPG, it's not going to be uh, that good. It's going to lag the heck out of your game, but it's, it's not going to matter if you have like a game like Crash Bandicoot, Jack and Dex or something like that. So yeah, that's how simple it is to actually make a spawn point. And then so our, like I said, our camera, because we did change the script, we actually do have the camera that just locks onto it. And that's how you create a spawn. That's how you spawn a character prefab. And now you guys know how to grab prefabs from the resource folder and how to instantiate those all. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial. If you did, leave a like, comment down below. If you guys have any trouble, comment down below. I'm always happy to help. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching and have a good day.